Hey y'all, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and the mesh you see right now is actually all generated by the skin modifier. So in today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the skin modifier so that you can quickly create a base mesh for sculpting or create low poly characters. To use the skin modifier, all you have to do is select an object, then go to the modifiers tab and add in the skin modifier. Now immediately you can see the cube is now a skinned mesh cube. And the reason it looks like this is because the skin modifier uses edges and vertices to create a skinned outline of the mesh. You can think of it a bit like your own skeleton, where the edges are the bones, the vertices are your joints, and the skin modifier provides the muscle and external skin for your object. The skin modifier produces a mostly quad mesh, but as you can see around the corners of our cube, the quads it produces can be a bit misshapen. That said, if you want to use the skin modifier to create custom things, I find it's best to start from a single vertex. So in edit mode, select all of your vertices with A and then hit M and at center to merge all of the vertices together at the center of the object. Once you have a single vertex, you can extrude out new edges by selecting that vertex and hitting E to extrude. From there, creating your base mesh is as simple as creating a skeleton for whatever object you want to make. Now, depending on the complexity of your desired mesh, you may want to try combining multiple skinned meshes with the Boolean modifier. And if you aren't familiar with that, here's a card that can take you to my tutorial on that topic. But that's the gist of how the skin modifier works, so let's take a look at the settings to really see the power behind this modifier. Now our first setting is branch smoothing. Well, branches occur when there are three or more edges connected to a single vertex. In this model, we have two branches, here and here. And when I increase the value of the smoothing, the modifier relaxes the surface mesh around each branch vertex, with the side effect of shrinking the skin around that vertex. Now you may never use this, you may want to use this, it's kind of entirely up to you and how it plays into your mesh, but that's branch smoothing. Now let's talk about the symmetry setting. This setting is not for creating symmetry across an axis in the same way that mirroring usually works in Blender. To mirror a mesh that way, you'll need to add a mirror modifier to the top of the modifier stack. Instead, this setting creates more symmetrical mesh across the specified axis. And to show this off better, let me add in a subdivision surface modifier, which will add in some strange edge loops around the branch points. The symmetry options can help us clean up these weird edge loops by toggling an X, Y, or Z axis. And as I toggle those, you can see that the symmetry does improve, but if you want something perfectly symmetrical, I'd suggest using a mirror modifier placed above the skin modifier on the modifier stack. Our next setting then is smooth shading, and when we toggle it, the generated skin is shaded smoothly. Now you can also affect this by turning on the auto smoothing in the object data properties panel, even though the modifier hasn't been applied yet. Next we have mark and clear loose, and by default all skin is generated tightly, meaning that a branch vertex will generate extra edge loops in order to keep the output tight to the branch. However, branches can be marked loose, and when we do that, you can see the change. Marking a vertex as loose tells the modifier that this is a connection point for the mesh, and this does not need to be mapped tightly. But if you don't like how it generates, you can always just clear the loose on that vertex to return it to being mapped tightly. And then we have mark root. Now the root is the vertex with the red circle around it, and it's the place where the mesh will be generated out from. Also, if you use the create armature option when you're in object mode on the skid modifier, the root vertex will be considered the root of the armature. So think about where you want the mesh to be generated out from, and if you're going to rig the mesh, consider what point should be the root bone of the rig, and mark that vertex as the root. The last of the edit mode options is equalize radii. But before we can talk about that, let's talk about how to get the most out of the skin modifier. For obvious reasons, you wouldn't want to have all of your objects be this thin, so we've got to be able to adjust the size and scale of the generated skin around any particular vertex. Now you might think you'd be able to scale it, but you'd be wrong. The way to adjust the size of the skin at any given vertex is to hit Ctrl A and then move the mouse in or out like you were with scaling. You can also hit N to pull up the viewport properties panel and adjust the radius of X and Y for the mesh for any given vertex under the item tab. Since each vertex has an X and Y, you can actually adjust for each axis by hitting the control A and then either X or Y to lock the adjustment to that axis. If you end up in a situation where the X and Y values are too far apart and you want them to come closer together and actually like meet in the middle, 
The fastest way to do that is with the equalize radii option. Simply select the vertex that needs to be equalized and hit equalize radii. And the X and the Y skin radius values will be set to the median point between each. Now this only works on a single vertex though, so you can't select multiple vertices and try to equalize them together. So that about covers the skin modifier, but we do have one last feature to discuss. Back in object mode, we can finally use the create armature option. So as you can see, this arm here is just a skeleton for an arm with three fingers. But with the create armature option, we can quickly rig up this arm. Now you may not want to do that because it will turn every edge into a bone on your armature. So if you have extra edges in the skeleton that you don't want to be bones on your armature, then go ahead and rig that skeleton normally. But if you want a real quick armature of the object, you can simply hit create armature. When you do that, all of the other modifiers in the stack will be applied. So make sure you're finished modeling the object before you create the armature. Afterwards, you can hit control tab to tab into pose mode and then begin posing your character using said armature. Like I said before, this will generate a bone for every single edge in your skeleton. So in the arm here, you can see that I've got two bones for the forearm, which is definitely not what I want. So I'll have to go back in and fix the skeleton and reskin to exactly what I want, but that is a topic for another video. So that's the skin modifier and all it can do. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it. And if you want more tutorials on Blender, check out my channel and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching y'all. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you guys in the next one.